Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. This week, we're going to take a step back into some fundamental stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and take a look at all of the different lighting effects and show you what they do and how the lighting effect is displayed so that maybe it might give you some ideas for your layout. So let's take a look and let's get started. Now today for doing our testing, we're actually going to be using this locomotive equipped with a blue NAMI and we're going to be changing the headlight to the different lighting effects. Now the advantage here is that right now I'm using the blue NAMI and the blue NAMI app, but the lighting effects are still going to be the exact same ones that you can find on the Tsunami 2. And you will also be able to find most of them on your Econami as well. Now we're going to go ahead and to this locomotive right here, we have our Blue Nami app dialed up and we're going to use the Blue Nami app to make the changes. But as I mentioned, you can use this same lighting effects for all your Tsunami 2 and Econami has most of these lighting effects built in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click our gear setting down here in the bottom. We're going to get to our settings. Now we're going to go to the second gear here, which is light settings. And up here at the top, you're going to see headlight. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and change the headlight to the different lighting effects so that you can see the lighting pattern of each of these lighting effects. So by default, this is a lighting effect called the dyno light or in the diesel decoder called the diesel light. And what this does is this will actually gradually but very quickly illuminate the light so that it gives the image that the light is powering up and as the, everything's getting brighter. So when I go back and turn the light on and off, you'll see that it's not an instant on, it's actually more of a gradual. But we'll get back to that in just a second. So to change the lighting effect, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my menu. Now you can see that it pulls down a menu list of all the different lighting effects that we have built into the decoder. So to start off with, we have on-off output. That's pretty simple. It's a simple on-off, instant, on-off light. Next up is what's called a dim dimmable on-off headlight. And what this does, again, this allows you to turn it on and off, but then you can use the F7 to dim. So again, we don't necessarily need to do that one. So we'll step into the third light option there called the Mars light. So when we click the Mars light, you'll instantly notice that the he headlight on our locomotive is now flashing a Mars light pattern, which is a bright, gradually go dim, and then turn on, but not quite as bright, and then dim, and then goes back solid. What this is doing is this is simulating the oscillating uh, reflector behind the light in creating a figure eight pattern. And the flash that you're seeing is actually when that reflector is, ref is shining the lights into your eyes. And so that's what we're simulating here with the Mars light. Now, we can go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and click. Now we're gonna change it to this Pile National Gyro Light. And again, now you can see the gyro light pattern kick on. And it's a little bit different because instead of a figure eight, it's doing more of a circular pattern. So that's the flashing that you're seeing in that particular case. Now we're gonna go ahead and change our light. This is an oscillating headlight. And so in this case, this is more where the bulbs would move into an oscillating pattern. So you're actually gonna see the bulbs moving. And so you'll get a little bit of a slightly different flash rate uh, but again, all of these lighting effects are designed to draw the motorist's eyes off of the road to the light that's flashing in the corner so that they don't get run over by the train. So we've seen the oscillating light. Now let's scroll down to the single flash strobe one. Now strobe works a little bit differently in that there's a gas and electrons are flowing through it. And when the gas reaches a certain temperature, it releases a photon and that's the strobe. That's what you're seeing in this lighting effect. Now we have on our sections here, we have select phase selection and you can select phase A or phase B. And so what that is, is if you have two strobes, you can have one flash and then the other flash, exactly opposite of each other. Now, the reason I point this out is because the next light effect we're gonna go into this, we're gonna open up our menu. And we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here where we see single flash strobe two. Now when I select it for just my headlight, you're gonna notice that the light pattern looks very similar to exactly what you just saw, and that is true. But the difference is the flash rate is a little bit different. So if you have two strobes on top of a locomotive, they're not always flashing exactly the same rate. And so what this does, this will give the ability for the lights to flash in and out of sync with each other. 
And so that way you can have strobe one and strobe two. You can also have phase A and phase B. So if you're doing a remote control unit with four lights on top, you can actually have four strobes. Now it does take four outputs, but what a cool lighting effect you get. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and open our menu and we're gonna go back here. The next one in our list is our double flash strobe. We click that and you see the double release of photon lights. And again, it works very similar to a single flash strobe, except this is a double flash, so it's creating a double pulse. Next up here, we're gonna scroll up. We have a Western Cullen uh, rotary beacon. Now this is actually where the reflector spins around the light bulb. And what it does is that re reflector shines the light around and that's what's gonna catch your eye. And so that's how the light works. So there's just a single bulb and then the reflector shines around it. And usually those are located on top of the roof of a locomotive. Now next up, we have what's called a prime stratolite. Now a prime stratolite is actually different light bulbs facing in all four different directions. And the lights shine in a pattern around simulating the flashing rotating beacon. Now, because it's a stratolite, you're actually gonna get, with the lighting effect on the decoder, different brilliances to simulate the lights as they turn on and off in sequence. So it's not a smooth rotating flash, but it kind of gives you that illusion. So that way the bulb that's nearest you is the brightest. Next up, we'll go down here, and this is where we'll see our ditch light type one and ditch light type two. Now, what the ditch light type one and type two the way they work is that they're traditionally, in this case, type one is on, and then when you blow the horn, when you enable crossing logic, which I'm gonna do right here, crossing logic is showing disabled, I'm going to enable it. So to show you the effect, when I go back to blow the horn, you can see that that lighting effect will now start to flash. Now when I go back to my settings here, and now when I select the type two ditch light, now you'll notice that my light extinguished because type two ditch light is extinguished when crossing logic is enabled. And then when you blow the horn, the light starts flashing and will flash for however long you set the crossing hold time. So that's the difference between type one, type two ditch light. Let's go back to our menu here. Next up on the list, we have a flashing rear end device or a FRED. Now this allows you to simulate the flashing locomotive or the flashing light on a FRED at the end. So if you have a locomotive that you want to simulate with that FRED on it, um, some of you guys may remember we've done a YouTube video in the past where I used this lighting effect to simulate a blue flag signal located in the cab. So be sure to go back in our YouTube history and check that video out. Now we'll go ahead and click our menu list here. We're gonna scroll down. Next one up is what's called an exhaust engine flicker. And what this will do is this will simulate kind of some embers and so forth from the diesel engine as it's coming out. So to enable this light, what I have to do is get it moving. So when you start to see the locomotive moving, you'll start to see that light start flickering. And as you increase the speed of your locomotive, that flicker gains in intensity. So this is a really cool lighting effect if you want to put something over in your exhaust stack, kind of muffled, maybe with some cotton or something in there to try to simulate it. But this gives you the ability now to show some flickering light inside the exhaust stack there. And this will only flash when it's moving because typically when it's idle, it's not usually needing to burn a lot of fuel. Now apparently I have a whole lot of momentum built into this one, so it's gonna take a second for it to slow down. So we'll go ahead and move on while it's slowing down. Next lighting effect we're gonna scroll down is called a firebox flicker. As we've seen, this is primarily on a steam locomotive, but you should be able to get a firebox flicker. It's the flickering kind of like what you would see in a firebox of a locomotive. And then we also have a feature, one of the lighting effects is called smart firebox flicker. Now on a diesel engine, this isn't going to do anything, but in a steam locomotive, now the smart firebox flicker is actually going to flicker brighter and it's gonna increase in intensity in conjunction with the sound of Fireman Fred shoveling coal. And the reason for that is because now he has the firebox doors open as he's shoveling coal. 
So the good news is, is that on a steam locomotive, you can have that effect, and you've actually can see that I've implemented that effect on my old HO General that I did not too long ago, modeled in 1862. So again, go back and check out that video in Soundtrack's YouTube history. Next up is the Dino Light. Now this is what I was talking about with the, this is what's on by default. And again, when you turn the light on and off, and I'll turn it on and off here. So when I turn it off, it kind of fades out, but very quickly. When I turn it on, it fades on, but again, very quickly. Go back to our light settings. Now we're gonna scroll up here. The next light we have is what's called auto dim and forward. And so you have auto dim forward and auto dim reverse are the next two. And what this light will do is this will automatically dim the light when it is stopped. But when I start moving the locomotive in the forward direction, it maintains its dimness. Now to show the effect, I'm gonna actually bring the locomotive to a stop and then we're gonna change directions. If it ever stops, there it goes. Now we're going to change directions, and when I start moving in reverse, you can see that the dim and forward light actually now brightens up. So that way you can have an auto switching light for a switcher, for example, where the headlight would dim automatically in reverse, and then the reverse light would actually dim automatically in forward. So when the locomotive comes to a stop or is moving in the opposite direction, then it would actually dim the light. Now the next lighting effect, once we've done the auto dim forward and the auto dim in reverse, now we have what's known as a brake light. Now the brake light is a really cool lighting effect. And what we can do is when we're moving our locomotive, we're gonna go ahead and move in forward. And we're gonna start moving and that light should be on, but dim. Now the way the brake light works is when I actually trigger the F11 brake, you should see that light brighten up. This would be a great effect for using on trolleys, streetcars, other small little uh, gas critters or trucks or anything like that. You have that ability to have that brake light. Go back to light settings. Next up on the lights, on the brake light, we have two of my favorites, on off brightness one and on off brightness two. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. Now your headlight, you're gonna notice, is actually dimmed. And the reason for that is because this is an on-off, constant on-off, but dim. So you can adjust the brilliance. And these master settings here at the top where it says brightness, you have brightness one and brightness two. So what I can do is I can take this slider bar and I can reduce the brilliance and that light will dim out quite a bit. And then same thing, I can go up so I can set the brilliance based on what the light is for. So this is where you can use things like class lights and number boards or step lights, truck lights, those type of things without having to fool around with resistor uh, values, trying to calculate the right resistor to find the right brilliance and then only to find out you need to change it out after all. Just do your resistor for your light, whether it be an LED or a low volt light bulb, and then use the CV to adjust it. Now, as I mentioned, there's two brilliances, brightness one, brightness two. So when I go to the menu down here, you can see that there's on-off brightness one and on-off brightness two. So you can select that, so it gives you two tiers of registry. So if you want your number boards brighter than your step lights or truck lights or whatever, you can do that and adjust it accordingly. Next up on the list is an emergency gyro light. So we go ahead and hit that. Now you'll notice that the light is on but it's flashing. Now this is an emergency gyro light, but it, what it does is it overrides all of the other different lighting effects. So we're gonna go back here to, we're gonna turn off our headlight, but we are gonna go ahead and turn on our FX3 so you can see that the ditch lights are on. Well now, because this is the emergency gyro light, it overrides the other lights. So now when I turn on my headlight, you'll notice that the ditch light's extinguished because it's overriding. That's the emergency part of the gyro light. So that that way, if you have a red light on the nose of your uh, uh, F unit or E unit, or the back end of like say the big boy or the uh, challengers, you get that red emergency light flashing and it will override the other lights and extinguish them. So we'll go ahead and turn off our FX3 and then we'll go back to our settings with our light on. 
Next up on the list is our ash pan firebox flicker. Now, this is a light that I've used primarily with our steam locomotives. And again, it's just a gentle ash pan flicker. So it gives a little bit of a flicker, but not a massive. Um, not much you'd use that on a diesel locomotive, but it is built into there. Now, the last light that I don't have here in front of us to show is on the electric decoder, we actually have an arcing light. Now, the way this works is as you're running your locomotive with the overhead wire, you can actually mount an LED up in the top of your pantograph. So as you're running, every now and then that wire will bounce and create a flicker. And that's what you're going to see with the electric decoder that you can't see with our diesel decoder or the steam. So that's a electric unique lighting feature. So now that we've gone through and shown you all of this, as you can see, we have phase selection, phase A, phase B, and that's where you get things like the ditch lights to alternate and flash instead of flashing together at the same time. Uh, crossing logic means you can have lighting effects happen when the crossing logic goes on. So say for example here, we're going to go to this Mars light and we're going to enable the crossing logic. So what you're going to see is actually a solid light, but then when I go back and blow the horn, you're going to start to see that Mars light effect start to take place. Now this is again where you would do the alternating flashing ditch lights and things of that nature. So there's a lot of settings here. Um, also one last thing I want to point out is the uh, headlight type, whether it's an incandescent bulb or an LED. Um, those actually change the way that the signal is sent through the wire. You do still need to have resistors, but it changes the way the signal is sent through the wire so that your LED will appear more animated because they have different lighting properties. So this way make sure that you get the right lighting device selected in your menu so that when you have your locomotive running you're going to get an actual good light. So to show you this for example we're going to go ahead and change this to an incandescent. We're going to disable the crossing logic so now you can see that my Mars light without LED on you can see the pattern but it's not very animated. You can see that it's there, but it just really doesn't, it doesn't have that pop. So again, we change this back to an LED, and now you can see that it has the pop that you're looking for. Now, all of these lighting effects are available on all eight lighting functions throughout the Tsunami 2 and the Blue Nami product line. So you can go through, now with the Blue Nami, of course, you can scroll through and make your adjustments. In the Tsunami 2, these are adjustable and selectable by CVs. So be sure to check out the user's guide for detailed information on how to set these up. So guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. We hope this has been helpful.